Last time on Disco Elysium. The pale is the most dominant geological feature of the world, detective. It is possible to force dimensions on the pale. In modern times, we can even compress its latitude, bouncing radio waves from one end to the other. This time at last, my nasty speed reeks. A brother man is about to grow up. DJ Flatios, Big Boy Daniel Single is here. Buckle up, because this is the fastest track that you're ever going to hear. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. You're great. There. We were there. Full circle. Back to Feld, then. When you're ready. You do know one thing about radios. You learn. Ruby dabbles in advanced radio theories. You learn the Speed Freak's mystery. It might just be related. If she's here on the coast, she'll be here. And besides, something weird happened to the twins around here. It'd be nice to know what caused that. Right. How do we get in there? Perhaps you can climb them. We are not climbing anything. I'm 43 years old, and I plan to live to see 70. Zoot, zap, ow, crinkle. It's like magic. You feel yourself disappear, your atoms fading out of existence. I just saw you climb the ladder. You just climbed it like a regular person. Never mind. Find a way to let me in when you get inside. What do you mean, who's there? It's me, Kim. Stop playing around and help me get your door open. Suddenly, your entire body is paralyzed. Aggressive white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before. Through the static, you hear a woman's voice. A pale latitude compressor is used to sort of make the pale more manageable. With a lot of these, you can force a radio signal grid on the pale, literally crunch the distance across it. So, what we are experiencing is a concentration of radio waves. Precisely. This is an industrial strength paraboloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you may be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. It could have turned out pretty bad for me if you hadn't walked right into 25 bands of ultra-high frequencies. You did it. The compressor lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. It still hurts like hell, but... Oh, fuck it. She pulls the trigger before you finish your sentence. Lieutenant Yefreitor Dubois, control your emotions. We did our job. This won't be the worst thing that happens on this case, believe me. You can't let this break you. It may take days for processing to pick up her body. We need to move it somewhere. Okay. Where were we? Right. Uh, Ruby... Ruby killed herself, and now we kind of covered her back in her tent. I think we're supposed to go back into Marginese proper. It's been a while since I played this game, so I'm gonna have to relearn a whole lot of things. Uh, let's see. Return twirling in rags. Alright. Wait, what's my equipment like? Flashlight. I don't think we really need a flashlight. Mm. Going back to the whirling. I think uh, this be okay for now. Let's go. Sit. I think I should be able to fast travel from the from the hut. Hey kids, stay out of trouble, okay? All right, let's uh, let's give this a shot. 
All right, maps over here. Huh. It's not letting me fast travel. I am in the right spot, right? Yeah. Well, okay, I guess we'll just do it the, the hard way. It's not that far, I'm just a little bit lazy right now. Right, there's the car. Or I guess, um, call it the kinema here. A specific type of police car. Yeah, it's been a while. I miss this. Whoa, what's going on? Stop. Just up ahead. Danger. Danger. What you have isn't enough. You need more firepower. A ranged weapon. Are we gonna get in a fight? You try to take comfort in the weight of your pry bar. <laughs> or crowbar. Or pry bar. Call it what you will. It doesn't stand a chance against military grade weaponry. What am I supposed to do? Be prepared. Wield Ruby's double barreled pistol. Okay. What a shitty gun. But it's better than nothing. I'm not sure I feel ready for what lies ahead. I prefer hand to hand combat. I'm not sure I feel ready for what lies ahead. Then you'd better get ready. Whatever happens, I've got your back. He frowns and quickly adds, gotcha. Alright. So we're gonna get into a fight. We got a crowbar and we got a gun. I think that should be good. Let me see if there's anything I can do with my clothes. Also, how many bullets? Oh, I only have one bullet. <laughs> I have one shot. This is gonna be great. Um, what can I do? Visual calculus. Savoir faire. Savoir faire is the physical thing, right? Drama. I don't think we need drama for... Well, visual, visual kind of gets more like analysis. I don't know if that's going to help in the fight. Reaction speed. Perception. Logic. Um, rhetoric. I don't know. I feel like... Anything can happen right now. I'm not quite sure how this is going to... Work at perception. Empathy. Composure. Oh, what's this? Plus one to Ma Mazovian socioeconomic. Sure, let's talk about. Um, oh, we're probably going to need this one. Which is going to replace the. That. Yep, we're definitely going to need that. No. Logic, authority, empathy, logic. Encyclopedia. Shivers, physical instrumentation. Volition, Inland Empire. Pain Threshold. What do I have? Half Light. In Maybe I need to change the pants. Kingdom of Conscience is probably not going to help here. Minus One Sob Affair is also not going to help. Minus One Reaction Speed, probably a bad idea. I really don't have any good options for pants, do I? Uh, if I can, if I found the fawn pants, maybe that would have helped. Suggestion. Esprit. Suggestion half light. Or minus. Drama electrochemistry. I don't know if that's going to work. Shivers. Hand eye coordination. Empathy. I don't know. You know, let's just uh, go in as is. At the very least, we want the armor, right? Oh, Seedling's not here. Can I grab his stuff? Mm, da, 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 no, I guess not. All right. Well, we I'm go. All out of shit to give, loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Wait, isn't this guy the the scab leader? He was one of these guys. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. Alright? 
Titus remains calm. He doesn't sound calm. Shut up! You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck! Jeez. This is the scab leader. His uh. chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. <laughs> His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. Okay, so I wasn't I wasn't imagining things when I thought it was a scab leader. There's something very wrong with him. He's dangerous. Shh. Oh. Okay. The lieutenant raises his left hand. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The kipt is merciful. Willing to spare us. If we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander, I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. Her tone is frighteningly emotionless. Quite the very strong woman here. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. I don't think you're going to convince him that easily. She sounds very sure of herself, though. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? His voice is almost gentle. Peaceful. It sounds like the armored figure is weeping. Can't even see his face. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse. The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Fuck, there's a third one. How did we miss something like this? The lieutenant points to the helmeted figure. We're out of time. This is, what do we do? The big one is the damn scab leader. Stop this, please. The big one's the scab leader. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. It's true. A sound strategy. He's the leader. Uh, what do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. He puts his hand to his holster. Good. I mean, getting killed is a pretty good plan. Uh, how we do it, though, that's a different story. We're out of time. The mercenary tribunal. Ah, that's what this is. Okay, well... There's the police. Let's go. Stop! There's the police! Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. Oh. He licks his lips, waving his gun at the crowd. Losing his balance for a moment, he staggers backwards. Pig fuck! Is the only word you can make out. I can see you're drunk. One wrong move and I'm taking you out. Easy now, no one needs to die today. Uh, say nothing, cross your arms. Mm. Okay, we need to de-escalate the situation. Easy now, no one needs to die here today. Oh, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up for everyone to see. Yeah, I don't, it's not, it wasn't them. Well, they did hang him up, but it wasn't them who killed them. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. Crap. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. Suddenly, your fingers holding the grip of a gun that has just taken a life tingle. Go for it, it seems to say. Uh, are you sure now's the time? Shoot him in the mouth. Shoot him before he shoots you. Let's see. No, wait. It's good you have that gun. It really is. Just soften him up first. Present an argument. Oh, jeez. Okay, we got some good um, chances and really bad chances. Who is that man? Point to the... Who is that? Point to the man. I don't know you had a third guy. Rude. Rude is the killer. Rude, the killer. Hoan Cloven. He doesn't talk much. He, he talked quite a bit. All of you cunts inside out. What was that, Rude? The killer. Rip you open. The killer? The gunner. The raddest. The killer. He gestures towards himself, and then nods towards the woman. And then he points to the figure clad entirely in ceramic plate. Oh, you are the gunner. She is the raddest. What is the raddest? And the killer. 
What do you think he does? Uh, he kills. Yeah, <laughs> tends the stables. You think you're real tough, huh? This killing is meaningless. Think you're really tough, huh? This killing is meaningless. Uh, I don't know if I should say that. This killing is meaningless, but... Meaningless. Let's say meaningless. Huh. He just stares at you with his watery eyes. What are we waiting for? Let's blow that pig fucking mouth off his face. Lance Corporal, just fucking shut up and wait for your order. Listen, listen he didn't do it. You're all drunk. Look at yourselves. Uh, Wild Pines Rep does not approve this. They didn't do it. Yeah? Who did that? Wait, I just a little bit... I need a little bit more time to figure it, figure it out. It wasn't Titus, it wasn't Classe, it wasn't Ruby, it wasn't me. It was someone else, someone who's not here right now. Yeah, someone who's not here right now. How fucking convenient. Uh, he gives you a drunken stare, then puts his hand on the gun. He shot from a great distance. A sniper did it. A lot of people could have gotten on that roof, like Guard, the cafeteria manager. Actually, they are here. Nope, it was one of you. Nope, change my mind. I still change my No, you cannot. Uh, shot from a great distance. I mean, Ruby said it wasn't uh, anyone on the roof. There was no gunshot there. There was. I think there was another point that was blocked. So it could. It had to be in from really far away. It was a sniper. Do you think I'm fucking stupid, cop? What if I just shot one of your pals here right now? Oh crap. Huh? Uh, there's a dangerous gleam in his eye. How about the kid? Tell me. The magic fucking sniper one more time. Elizabeth. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead cop marshal won't decide who... Yeah, they're not gonna listen to you. You're a little bit too desperate in your voice, too. He's gonna do it. He's gonna shoot her. Think, think, think. Why doesn't he believe me? The Hardy Boys confessed to hanging him. Yeah. All together titus said we took him out back and hanged him he said it loud in a public place that was idiotic of you guys just just saying wait they didn't confess listen he was shot he wasn't hanged you're lying the paul heard it he doesn't move the weapon you heard wrong she and these men have been helping us find the shooter the hanging was only a cover-up when they confessed they were lying, the gardener isn't one isn't even one of them. Uh the hanging was only a cover up. Fuck it. Oh. oh, where'd it go? He pulls the trigger, a plume of smoke erupts from the muzzle of his gun. The shot rings in your ears. A low tinny ring. Then the hardy boys yell something. The young woman stands and looks behind her. The shot has flowed over her head crashing a small pane of the glass window behind her. I missed. The man looks at his revolver and smiles. I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. Yeah, they did, but... That doesn't sound good. You need to change the topic now, or there will be another shot. Okay, what do we do? What topic? Shots have been fired. Act before it's too late. This was a close call. Wild Pines Rep does not approve this. You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> he laughs. It's a hollow laughter. What does that mean? Wild Pines is not going to forgive massacring a bunch of innocent people. We're working together. She knew you're out of control. She told me. Uh, let's see. They're not going to forgive you for masking a bunch of innocent people. Uh, innocent is probably not something they think is right. How about out of control? Can we do that? She's gone, you stupid fuck. Sailed off five minutes ago. She doesn't give a shit about you, Silo. Wait. Wait, she left already? Stay cool. Don't do anything stupid. Titus shouts to his men in the background. The company bitch is gone. Bailey's gone. Fuck are we still doing in this shithole? He looks around, tired, suddenly. And sad even. Guys, I, um... Uh, 
I just get in the way. I don't even have a gun. The little guy breaks formation. Hold your ground. Any more of you run, I shoot you myself. Oh wow, he ran. We're doing <laughs> this together. Titus turns to his men as the other one runs to the yard. They're afraid, all of them. Trembling reeds in the wind. They'll run, scatter soon, one by one. Where's Classe? She can explain. Who the fuck is that? Classia, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left! The manager calls down from the balcony. Oh, great. We gotta run away now. Guard, what the hell are you doing there? What do you mean she left? She left! Her room's cleaned out! Right before these assholes showed up! Well, uh, she was quick. We should have arrested her. The lieutenant whispers, his eyes still on the armed missionaries. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! Oh, crap. Uh, the veins on the man's neck expands as he yells. She's gone. Forget about it now. Concentrate on this. Uh, you're all drunk. Look at yourselves. Yes. So what? Judgment is impaired. You'll regret this. Nah. I'm clear as day. Fucking government ordained super soldier. He wipes the sweat from his brow. Enough already. What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat. Oh yeah, she mad. Interrupt me again and I will execute you on the spot. Last uh... Let's see, talked about the hangman, think of an argument. All right, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Krenno would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. You only have time for one argument. Choose wisely. Just the question, who's in charge of your unit after the death of your colonel? Colonel does not give you the right to conduct a tribunal. You were called Downwell once. What happened? Downwell. Go up and say nothing. Uh... All right for the tribunal. Pops, you have no idea about the rights Cronell extends to us. He says looking at your saggy sideburns, they seem to calm him down for a second. I don't care, it's not okay to kill civilians and local law enforcement o uh, officers. Uh, jeez, which one? Okay, what, what rights are those then? Okay, what rights are those then? If I fuck and kill you, hang you to that streetlight by your shit then that's called a necessary display of force. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a little bit much. Just say. No one's going to give a shit about dead loincloths. <laughs> that's reality. Mm. Okay, it's not much. But he's thinking about something else. And his hand is off the gun. This did something. Okay, so let's talk about the hangman. Dangerous. Okay, good. Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. Okay, let's... I knew you weren't a goddamn scab leader. Uh... Who are you, Corti? I knew you weren't a scab leader. Who are you? Yeah, you are, you're not a scab leader. What the heck? Yeah. I don't fucking act so well. Laylee had a hard on for making faces for you natives. Fucking food aid shit. <laughs> that shit is done now. Trigger time. Who are you, Cordy? Sergeant Major Raoul Cortiner, reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. Mud hut? Quite a. quite a bit of. other stuff here for being a mud hut points the whirling in rags. As he moves, the interlocking pieces of his armor click. Softly. Click, click, click. A realization comes to you, like a picture puzzle coming together. His name is Raoul Cortenar. The dead man's name is Elise Cortenar. He's brothers with the deceased. 
Oh! I didn't get. I, oh, wow. For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer, you're all sentenced to death by lead. Uh, Fortuner, I know that name. His parents left him in the fucking leaf compactor. Listen, you're Lely. Everyone says good things about him. He was a talker. Uh, no one says good things about him from these guys. Uh, he had blue eyes, didn't he? Your colonel. Your colonel did not deserve to go out like that, I promise. I will find the killer. Uh... Cordner, I know that name. He sways from left to right, inspecting you. Raw and Ellis Cordner. I'm sorry about your brother, Raw. He wasn't my fucking brother. We just grew up on the same farm and got beat into place by the same sick fuck. Well, brother's enough. Beaten by a foster parent or someone on the farm. And then went to the same military academy in the same unit and the same war. You were foster brothers, I know that. Uh, same military academy, unit, and war. Same fucking mud hut town, too. He looks around and wipes his face with his armored glove. Okay, good. Okay, that calmed him down a bit. His parents left him in a leaf compactor. Who? Lady. Yeah, when he was small, just an infant. We researched him. We contacted the ICP and looked at his birth records. That was in there. And other things. They fucking put Lely in a leaf compactor. And now these cunts finished the job. Oh crap, that was a bad move. He waves at the gang huddled by the doors. With his real anguish in his voice, a drunken sadness suddenly engulfs him. Memories. Or maybe it made him... a bit... weaker? It's a mind fuck, Corti. He wasn't put in a leaf compactor. They're making it up to fuck with us. Uh, you think Major, so? permission to. Open fire. We can't have that. Interfere now. Listen, you're Lely. Everyone says good things about him. He was a talker. Uh, these guys didn't say good things about him. No one said good things about him except for the for Classe. He had blue eyes, didn't he? Your brother. Blue eyes. Blue eyes. Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. He smiles, pulling his face in a strange way. It was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. <laughs> or, I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down plants. Okay, number three is probably not a good idea. Uh, so, your brother did not deserve to go out like that. I promise I will find his killer. Find his killer? Cough. His killer stands right there. Yeah, it's not them. Shitting his pants, and you're standing in the way, protecting them. He waves at the men behind you. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die for them. Right here. Today. He stares at you, eyes pink from the alcohol, fingers tapping the pistol. Big talk, but that leaf compactor won't leave his mind anytime soon. It's a small thing. But it got him off center. Okay, let's um, let's try this hand-eye coordination. Fifty-eight percent is not great, but it's it's worth it. It's worth a try. Yes. Is it gonna work? A plume of smoke and fire erupts from the gun, and your hand goes numb from the explosion. Look through the smoke rising from the barrel. Look at Cordner. Uh, look at Cordner. There is a hole in his cheek. Blood gushes out as he stumbles backward, eyes filled with rage and disbelief, gurgling, muttering something unintelligible. And these two are also distracted, it's time to take them out. To your right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His moves are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. Kim. Kim's there. Reaction speed, uh, dodge the shot. Probably should not dodge the shot. Bl uh, blink, think. You stare down the barrel of the gun. You see Rude's mask behind it. His eyes in the slit of the helmet, like a camera lens, focusing on you. 0.6 seconds remain. There are six little black dots in the tip of the thick barrel, like a honeycomb. This is a knock cannon. 
It shoots six rounds in one pull of the trigger. Thank you for saying that. God, you're so frail. Too frail to think further. Time is running out. Kim? From the corner of your eye, you see the lieutenant raise his pistol and aim it at Rude. Okay, well, I think the only I can only try to dodge a shot. It's not gonna be pretty, but let's do it. A low shot. Yep, rings. that's what I thought. You feel a tapping like rain on your chest plate. Heavy drops of rain. Then the sound of dice rolling as the cuirass distributes the shot evenly from plate to plate. Good thing we had that armor. <laughs> you got hit. The armor took most of it, but still your ribcage burns. Feels like blood is slowly seeping into your lungs. Okay, so there is still one more gunner. God, please. The lieutenant says quietly, without trembling, he aims pale face. Two shots ring at once. One from the lieutenant's pistol, and the other from the balls. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Who screamed? Okay, he uh, Kim hit the rifleman, but who screamed? Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Okay, looks like everyone else uh, got out. Titus is here. Liz is here. You see two crazed eyes stare at you through all the smoke and the panic. Oh, With this is not gonna be good. gushing from his face, the man raises his pistol at you. Then he squeezes the trigger. I uh, look at him in the eye. The look of vengeance, framed in blood, lips shaking. This is the last thing he'll do on Earth. But he will do it. He is your end. Well, oh, crap. Here it comes. Death. Ooh. Evade the shot? If I evade the shot, Kim's gonna die, right? Or someone else is gonna die. Let it happen. Just tank it. Tank it. I can tank it. Happened. You simply blink, then something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. A distant blur as you recede into it. Listen, through the darkness and the pain, the Hardy Boys are screaming, fighting, dying. Someone jumps over you. Nearby gunfire shatters glass. Stop! Guard, don't get yourself killed. The cop! Protect the cop! He's down! That's your lower body. It feels slick and warm with blood. The pain is too strong to know what has happened there. Even clutching to your consciousness takes everything you've got. What parts of me are missing? Most of what's down there. Oh god, I don't care. Fuck me. Uh, oh god. It's all gone. Open your eyes now. You have to see what's happening. Try to open your eyes. What do I see? Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Is that Kim? Like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. No one wants any to do anything with me. No one wants to party with me. Of course, I get gunned down and die. Sorry, fuck. Kim, I lied to you about not remembering who I am. I made it up. I remember everything. Uh, there's a white shadow that smells like apricots. It's always there. Uh, what are my last words gonna be? <laughs> uh, there's a white shadow that smells like apricots. It's always there. Stay with me. You feel burning hot tears streaming from your eyes. I can't forget it. Even when I drank so much. I have... I. It said I had a vast soul. Do I have a vast soul? She would have started loving me again. But I called her and now she won't. Please call her Kim. She won't listen to me. Uh, I said I have a vast soul. Do I have a vast soul? Yes, keep talking. You hear me? Stay awake. Okay. 
But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy, and the sounds ever more distant. And the cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away. Almost gone. When suddenly, you sense something behind him. Kim, you're gonna get shot. A slender white shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound. Kim? Hands. Kim? D uh, dodge that now. Dodge that now. Now, now, now. No, you scream. Behind you, from your bloody lips, your eyes are full of fear. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant turns around and fires, his body falling on yours in the course of the motion. You hear a faint scream, a woman's. Then the sound disappears, like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim. Then the whole world. Fall into darkness. This is death. One more door, baby. One more door. Will I be a ghost now? Good, I want to die. <laughs> no. Let me back into the fight. I, I think everyone's taken care of. Um, will I be a ghost now? Brava. You already were a ghost. Up there, screaming along with all of them. Scaring each other. Haunting each other. It's the living who are ghosts. The dead are silent. They don't rattle windows or write letters in blood. The living do. Leave them behind. Rest. Okay, well... I done my job. It's time to rest, I guess. Good. I want to die. Of course. I know you do. Everybody leaves when they get the chance. Go on, keep falling. Deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead of the hours, hurting, moaning in his sleep, and rotting, and being disinfected, and smelling of drugs, and feeling saliva in his mouth, drifting in painkillers, thrashing in his bone sleep. He can't go. Not before the case is solved. Okay, well, I guess I still have a case to, to solve, huh? There was a radio in the distance. A radio of the world. Plain sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon, you will return to the world. <laughs> Hours turn to days. Soon, we will get up again and go through it. Again, again! Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. The engine of a caprice enabled. Yeah, Kim's. No, it was him. He is the infernal engine. Can't you see? He never stops. He only gets wild. Well, what happened to us? You see the lieutenant's familiar shape. Well, we got our legs. Jacket. It turns double, then triple from the pain. How is it around? Oh, wow, this room is so much cleaner now. Someone really cleaned this up. It's nothing. You're alive. That's what matters. Kim, you're also alive. Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise Parabellum? <laughs> what is this? The lieutenant says he's in the middle of a freshly cleaned room, with a fan above his head like a halo. His face is covered in bruises. Ouch. The room. 
It's clean. The piss jacket. Kim, who took it off? <laughs> oh, what do you say? Sunrise? What happened? How bad am I hurt? Ouch. It's not ouch time yet. You just go to the Rouen Min Pil an hour ago. Wait until it wears off. Oh, it'll be ouch time then. <laughs> Drew me. Then it's not that bad. Neither surgical nor organ damage bad, but still under the counter bad. Uh, the room is clean. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. Well, sorry about that. How long, how long have I been out? Two days, in and out. You've been up enough to take Drouamine and curse. And drink water. The piss jacket, Kim. Who took it off? Yes. The joke wasn't funny anymore. I took it off. Piss jacket? What piss jacket are we talking about? I don't know what we're talking about. The close proximity of death must have made the lieutenant contemplate his life choices. <laughs> He's done with the jacket. Okay. Uh, what did you say? Sunrise? Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary saying. Is it war today? The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. It looks out the window. I think we may have held it off for now. Barely. He unzips his bomber jacket. Uh, good. A pity. Ouch. <laughs> a pity, if I guess I was, uh, wanting the apocalypse to come. But good. Yes, we have also completely failed. But that's okay. But we failed? How? What happened? What happened? You shot the Major in the face. A firefight ensued. Is he dead? Yes. Okay. As retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He hit the cuirass. I heard it go off. I was looking for a clear line of sight to him. Yeah, and it hit me, and then the armor took it. He sounds a tiny bit sorry. He did not find it before you got hit. I shot and wounded him, while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. He did not survive. Well, rip Glenn. Titus, Fat Angus, and Theo charged. Angus and Theo did not make it. Oh. They both died before they made it to intensive care. Titus survives. Oh. So do Alain and the musician. I forget his name. Angus and Theo did not make it. Okay, so that's three dead. Eugene. Yes. He's still alive, too. Got it. You were bleeding out by then. I think you said something about your wife, and you warned me. I was able to disarm one of them, the pole, before she got a jump on me. Good. I killed her. And that's what happened. The lieutenant takes a cigarette from his coat pocket and lights it. I thought you only smoked once a day. This is the one. Okay. And they're all dead, all three of the contractors? The pool was the last to die. Everhart had their bodies returned to Connell for a funeral. The company is yet to retaliate. Why? Because we deterred them? Or Joyce did? Maybe the harbor in full lockdown is too costly a target. Or maybe... What? Maybe they are simply taking their time and will attack soon. I don't know. So, how many casualties on the Union side total? Three. Glenn, Theo, Angus, the fat one, he took a lot of bullets. And Theo, he was just too old for combat. There's a pause. Theo, yeah, he was pretty old. Um, I guess it was a good time for him to go, according to him. And that's... All. Okay. Absolute disaster. Total shit show, Kim. It's not that bad, all things considered. I don't see how it could have gotten any better. I don't see how it could have gone any better. Let's face it, officer, and this is both of our fault. It could have gone a little better. Six people are dead. Mm -hmm. Okay. He calmly says without accusation. Plus one. Ruby. Right, Ruby. But what's done is done. The violence is cold enough. The Hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. Okay. And... We are still alive, both of us. Well, that's good. That's always good. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. His smoking, his hunched back. You have it worse, but he took a real beating. That cigarette has medicinal <laughs> purposes. Medicinal purposes. Uh, how bad am I hurt? Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's it? your tie. It appears no major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurochrome. Mercurochrome. The bruising in your shoulder is negligible, 
They all more took the brunt of the fire. Neglijib, really, is the, the prince pronunciation. Pronunciation. Can I walk? We will see. Yeah, I guess we will. If it's possible, then by pure willpower <laughs> alone, you are going to have to become a psycho locomotor. What is a psycho locomotor? Has anyone from my station been to see me? No. Well, they don't care about me at all. Good, I don't need them. I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. Odd. You haven't seen any, have you? I'm sure they are worried about you. There's a pause. Meaning, I guess he saw them? That means he hasn't seen them around while you were out. They're not really worried about you. If they were, wouldn't they be here? If they're so worried about me, where are they? Better not agitate yourself further, it already hurts. Yeah, it already hurts. Sorry. Uh, I guess I'm a psycho locomotor. Whatever that is. Good. You'll need to be here. Whatever that is. <laughs> okay, so Kim and I are the same wavelength here. Uh, if not my station, then who treated me? I did. I didn't know you could do that. Thank you, though. Thank you. No need. Uh, are you hurt? Not very. I have a concussion from that woman beating me with the butt of her gun. I try to not move too much. Okay. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see her coming, stupid of me. Oh, right. So I guess we're going to get up now. Easy now. Uh, the lieutenant turns double again before your eyes. An orange hue of pain. You can take it. Just don't lean on that leg of yours too heavily. All right. Can I still run? How are you? Uh... <laughs> My disco days are done. I feel fantastic. Let's rock. Who cares? Who cares about me? It doesn't matter. It's very bad, Kim. Things are very bad. I feel fantastic. Let's rock. He nods. Okay, what happens now? I honestly don't know. You don't know? But I don't know either. Good, because I totally do. <laughs> I do? Um, I do? Let's try. Let's just, let's just see what happens. I do? Do you? Because we can't talk to Everhart. The harbor is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. And Joyce has left too. Joyce is gone. Yeah, we were told about that earlier. Yes, she left yesterday morning. To meet the board of Wild Pines. Oh, that is what I've heard. There's a pin somewhere in the machine that keeps Connell from sending in a death squad. She looks out the window. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Well, I didn't know we were supposed to arrest her. Wait, you check? She's really... Who did it, Kim? Who killed the hangman? Wait, you checked? So she's really... God confirmed she left 20 minutes prior to the tribunal showing up. Oh, she was a quick one. Then who did it? Who killed the hangman? I don't know. I think the theory you presented, it's someone else, outside our circle of suspects, was right. It better be. Everyone within the circle is either dead or gone. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. His voice is calm, matter-of-factly. This is because I'm a Lapucha Madri peon, isn't it? Uh, the fucking Maybells, Kim, the flowers. About that hole in the... Uh, ouch, wall. Um, someone was checking her out. The footprints. There's still a 28% possibility the shot came from a distance. Yeah, there's that. We should go upstairs, rethink the ballistics in situ. I agree with this. What else? See? Uh, there's that. You can do ballistics. Maybells. There's the flowers. What? Yank it out and show the dried flower while it falls to pieces. This one, remember? Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to keep everything. Yes, I do. He's wrong. No, Kim. Every piece of garbage in the city is connected to the case. <laughs> okay. He concedes clearly not meeting it. Okay, well... What about the hole in the the wall? Someone was checking her out? I don't know. That's been there for years. The footprints? Yes. 
God cursed the footprints, not solving the case for us. Oh, <laughs> Diable. Oh, Diable. Uh, there was that hidden bunker under the boardwalk, revolutionary area. We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Revachol is full of them. Mm, let's see. Is it because of... Nah, let's not do the first one. The miracle hasn't happened yet. It's not over yet. He does not know what to reply. Looks out of the window, then back at you. It's morning outside, you think. The miracle hasn't happened yet. I guess that was something from my dreams, right? You know what I think about solving crimes? You know what I think about solving crimes? He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. Solving crimes is hard. Solving crimes is almost impossible. Solving crimes is super easy. Actually, I wanted to talk about this crime some more before I tell you what I think about its hardness. Uh, solving crimes is hard. It really is very hard. <laughs> it really is. That concussion must be making him dizzy. You're not ready to give up, are you? All right, let's give up. Time to start drinking. <laughs> no, we're not going to give up. Uh, but you're not ready to give up, are you? No. Are you ready to limp? I'm ready. Good. Where do you want to limp to? Uh, I guess we'll limp towards the second floor. The lieutenant or did third mention floor. doing more ballistics. Yeah. Also, it's just close enough to endure the walk. We should check Classy's room upstairs. Let's just aim wander. Let's just aimlessly wander until a clue presents itself. Uh, yeah, the upstairs. Why not? He extinguishes a cigarette on the sole of his boot. And we are off. Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. Yeah. Let's see if anything else is worth looking at. How do I can't click on anything? Newly replaced glass shining in the morning light. You hear traffic outside, back in the world again. And it looks like... I have the gun on me. Let's remove the gun. I don't think we need that. Do we have anyone to throw authority to? Okay, out of bullets, the one gun that we had is... Eh, better or worse. You know what? Hold up a sec. I need to save. I, I, I don't feel right if I don't save. There we go. We had that saving error before. I don't want it to happen again. The Stereo 8 player has been reunited with its rightful speaker. Awesome. Look, the door is open. You can walk right into Kim's room. You see gleaming white enamel. No bottles inside. Okay. Uh, what's this? Alarm is set for 650. Medicinal supplies in the cupboard. Mercurochrome, a scalpel, and antibiotics. Anything else in this room? I forgot how to... Ah, there we go. It was tab. What's over here? These papers bear the stamp of the RCM. They appear to be fragments of the lieutenant's paperwork, half finished. You may cap notes on this and other recent cases. Let's read. <laughs> I had got opened the door to your room. You were running a low bacterial fever the first night. Oh, he closed the notes. Uh, thank you for keeping this thing alive a little longer. Point to yourself. I'm such a burden. I should just fuck off. Uh, I saw apocalyptic visions of the darkness. Behind darkness. Behind darkness. I thought I was dead for a moment. Uh, thank you for keeping this thing alive a little longer. It would have been easy were it not for my concussion. We both got lucky, considering the odds we faced. Let's go. Sure, I guess we, he doesn't want us to read that. Can I exit through the front door? No, he won't let me. Okay then, we are gonna go the, the long way. Oh no, don't, don't close that. We, we need to go through there. <laughs> we need to go through there. All right, well, I'm going to run. Ouch, that leg hurts. Maybe if you don't run, it'll be okay. I'm going to keep running. Let's see. It looks like she's left something on the table. What did she leave? 
next to the stack of bills, you see a note, a few lines jotted down in large, uneven handwriting, just as the writer was about to rush out the door. I'm sorry, I fucked everyone over. P.S. I didn't kill him. P.P.S. Gift upstairs. Okay, a gift. What could this gift be? She seems she left in a hurry. The lieutenant turns to the staircase suspiciously, looking for any signs of another presence in the shadows above. Seems she left in a hurry. It's hardly surprising. What could this gift be? I am not drawing my gun. Yet. But I don't like gifts. He says he's not, but his hand moves instinctively toward his holster as he studies the note. Just don't walk into another radio trap, okay? <laughs> that would be bad. Relax. Not everyone is out to trap you. Alright. I guess we'll check it out. Is there anything I can take here? Or is it is everything cleaned out by now? The medicine cabinet is empty. Not even a toothbrush. Okay Pity. then. I was kind of hoping the gift would be in here. She really cleaned this out. Mm -hmm. She certainly had her priorities straight when she was packing. I was hoping... I was kind of hoping the... I was kind of hoping the gift would be in here. I always took you for more of a drunk than a chemical abuser, <laughs> Lieutenant Hefreiter. Should we go? Sure. Let's go. No, I was just hoping that sh there was something, you know, something a little bit stronger to take the pain off my leg. That would be nice. Oh, this is different. A red thread made of nylon. It leads out of the room and onto the roof. All right. You see the same two neon lit shapes, a man and a woman. Only now a red thread bisects the room, pointing from the antenna outside to the cupboard on the wall. This is ballistics. She's left a trajectory for us. The lieutenant tests the thread with his finger, drawn taut. It rebounds instantly. A ray of backward motion explodes from his mouth to the roof outside. A prime to then widen into a radius of locations in Martinez. B prime, B double prime, and B triple prime. Where does a thread lead? It suggests the bullet came from the extreme upper quadrant of possible angles, from a point beyond the roof. B triple prime. So the isolated island, right? The island in the bay. Is she trying to tell us the shot came from the islet? How did she know how to do this? Is she trying to tell us that she's shot? Unless she thinks the perpetrator was standing on the ring antenna. That is where the thread seems to point. Let's see. How does she know how to do this? She was there that night. She would have known precisely where the bullet hole was in the glass. It also looks like there may be more to her skill set than we know. The question is, should we trust her? Of course we don't trust her. This is her way of saying she's sorry. Uh, I just don't know. Uh, I mean, at this point, I guess we have to trust her, right? I guess it is her way of saying she's sorry. I find that hard to believe. But at this point, what difference does it make? This is also one of the few places in Martinez we haven't been to. So it is. Maybe we need to go to the island. Yeah, that's not gonna work. There must be something else we miss. So, let's go to the island. <laughs> The wind blows in from the open window. The lieutenant sighs, looking into the cold distance across the water. The lead is flimsy. You might as well go around Martinez, looking under every rock and talking to every person. But what else is there? What else is there? Not a lot, no. Then... Kim, let's go to the fucking island. I'm going to the island. Are you in? Actually, yeah, let's not go to the island. Uh, I'm going to the island. Are you in? Of course, of course. I mean... He takes a second to gather himself and says... How do we get there? Joyce Messier had her sloop, but she's gone. Uh... Lillian, the nut picker, she's towing her boat. Ah, yes, of course. The village. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Didn't take much convincing. I guess we'll go down here. Or... Uh, I don't know if it makes that much of a difference, but... I want to try to take the, 
the ele elevator down. Since, you know... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's something else here. The thread is tied to an antenna. That's it? Yeah. I thought I was going to get something else. But... I suppose the only other thing I can do is go down. This is my shortcut down. <laughs> knock, knock. Gonna open this door. Can I? Yeah. Hey, guard. I need to talk to you. Thank you for cleaning everything. How's it going? Oh, you're up. It's good to see you back on your feet. Did you like your room? I cleaned it for you. You sound a little bit different, guard. What's up? I did. Thank you. Big improvement. It could have used more work, after all. I just took a bullet for this place. <laughs> you did. I was too distracted to notice. Uh, I guess uh, let's just thank him. Thank you. Big improvement. You're welcome. I thought it would be nice for you to wake up in a clean place after you, let's be fair, defended this establishment and its clientele from gunfire. Well, guard, thank you for the respect. Where was this, like, how many playthroughs ago? I give credit where credit is due, and that, sir, was a nice shot. Oh, thank I you. I was watching until you hit him. Crawled inside, then. Bullets started flying. Anyway. <clears throat> he clears his throat. I wish you a quick recovery. Also, you and your partner are staying here free now. This establishment supports cops. The stay is free, the drinks are not. It just felt I needed to specify that. That is fair. That is fair. Where did everyone go? Oh, you know, people don't tend to stick around after shootouts. Turns out they're not good for business. He looks around the empty place. I guess that makes sense. Are Lena and Morel still in town? Ah, them. Nice people. But no, Lena said they were going back to Jamrock. I saw them pass by, outside. This was before the fight started. Good, so they they were not involved. I'm glad she got out of here before all that. Bullets flying and stuff. People inside were quite terrified, you know. I had to take action and step outside, too. Okay, yes, that was for the best. But we weren't looking for the... <laughs> but we weren't done looking for the fast mid. I mean, you're a detective. Perhaps you can track them down. Shouldn't be that hard. Uh, it's kind of a little bit hard to find fast mids by asking people. Exactly, but all in due time. Crypto business is not a priority right now. Sure. You'll see her again one day. You know it. Things went like they did for a reason. I guess. Oh, fine, hero cop. <laughs> Lena left a forwarding address. 1113 Tabernacle Road in Jamrock. If you see them again, do give them my best. Okay, at least we can visit. Uh, what happened to the man with the sunglasses? I don't remember everyone who comes here. And many people wear sunglasses inside lately. Must be a fad. Okay. Um, okay, so I have to mention when it happened. You were right out there, on the balcony. Yeah, I was. Yeah. That's because I'm a bad ass. Yeah, I guess you are a bad ass. You say it as two different words like that, it sounds like there's something wrong with your ass. Uh, just not so quickly. Uh, if you say it two different words like that, it sounds like there's something wrong with your ass. Yeah, well, fuck you too then. <laughs> Do you have any more questions or stylistic pronunciation advice? No, that's it. I'm just glad you're the same guard I know. Thank you. No problem. They'll come back. They always do. Okay. Well, moving on. I guess we'll talk to these guys too. And there's Titus and short people. Hi again, Gendarme. Okay, nothing. Bye bye, Gendarme. Nothing new with him. Now that I don't think it's, I don't think it's, it would help here anyway. All about money. Okay, nothing here either. All right, let's talk. Seeing you approach, the bruised man raises his bear in welcome. How's it going, Titus? Crazy motherfucker. <laughs> Didn't think you had that fury in you, but I guess I've misjudged a lot of people lately. 
Well, you're also not very easy to talk to. Just saying. That was one hell of a shot. Hell of a shot. The fox did not expect that. He looks at you with unmistakable respect. I guess what I'm trying to say here is, thank you for intervening, fellas. That was mighty brave of you. He extends his hand. This is big. It's as big of a thank you as Titus Hardy can muster under any circumstances. I mean, it was, uh, it, I think it's heartfelt, so I think I'll shake it. Shake it, no need to thank me, just doing my job. Shake his hand and nod in silence. Don't shake it, look, I need to talk to you. Actually, I just came to say goodbye. <laughs> um, no need to thank me, just doing my job. Well, cheers anyway, copper. He raises his whiskey bottle and salute. Drinking heavy today, aren't you? But it said you you had beer. Not whiskey. What happened with that? I'm sorry about the people you lost. Dio was old. I think he'd be pretty happy with the way he went. Never could imagine him withering away on a sickbed. His bruised face stiffens. Okay, so he's a little bit affected. But Angus... He was just a stupid kid. Didn't realize the mess he'd gotten into. Trusted me. Still, the balls on that kid went down fighting for someone else's shit like a fat, angry <laughs> bear. Fat, angry bear. And Glenn. Glenn was my friend. Best I've ever had. I love that crazy homo like my own brother. Homo? We're all fucked without him. But what do you do? This job is shit. Hold on. What about Shanky? Dennis, you saw him run. He's a mean little shit and I never trusted him. <laughs> he better run real fast now. I real guess. Real fast. I guess he's not welcome anymore. Titus makes no attempt to hide his disgust. Grief-stricken anger boils in him. Ah, uh, they were good people. I'm sorry it went like that. Well, yeah. Memento Mori. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, totally, totally. Absolutely. Today, I'm going to get drunk, eat good food, and bed a good-looking guy. Because <laughs> tomorrow, a motor carriage might run me over. Okay. Or you might die of a heart failure or syphilis. Hey, hey, fuck you for ruining a beautiful idea. Uh, what's that going to happen to the Hardy Boys now? First... We're gonna find Dennis. Oh boy, okay. I'm going to find Dennis. I'm going to find him, and then I'm going to kill him. The tone of the statement is so matter-of-fact. It's as though he were talking about picking up a morning newspaper on his daily walk around the block. Uh, that's not gonna bring back frontier justice, I like that. Your guy, your responsibility, do what you feel is right. The lieutenant shakes his head but doesn't say anything. Mm hmm We're hunting that rat down. Let it be known what happens to cowards. And then... Okay... I guess I'll take a closer look at our Union members. There's bound to be some ambitious fellows there who'd love nothing more than advancing social democracy by busting some heads. Uh... Hmm. Right. Might even ask Tibbs if he's tired of replacing Windows, and maybe wants to have some fun with his brother. Anyway, don't you worry. As long as Titus Hardy's standing, there will be Hardy Boys. And yet another case of vigilantism. All right, gotcha. He's right. The numbers are replaceable. In an organization of thousands of men, there are plenty who join. Do you know what happened to Classe? Don't know. Don't care. I'll be glad if I never see that fucking woman again. Titus, after we've all we've been through, level with me. You really like her, didn't you? Same here, man. Okay, got it. Uh. Okay, got it. He nods and takes another sip of whiskey. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to talk about her, so. Any idea what I should do now? Nope, we know what to do. So long, fellas. Be good so I don't have to come back here again. Take care, coppers. You two look after yourselves now. Death passed on you today, but men don't get that lucky twice. You never know.
Copo loco. And the... Uh, huh. Normal cop, I guess. Good luck in Shamrock. Scars made the best tattoos, they say. Thanks for getting involved, guys. Not a lot of cops would step into that line of fire, but you did. Well, we had a job to do. And if you ever feel like the uniform is holding you back, I've got a few vacancies. You'd make one hard, hardy boy, copper. I think I'd rather be a cop. But, okay. I think that's it for this area. Oh, what's this? Anju Giseral De Retour Pres de... What's that? What's this? Pres de Toy? What? I can't speak French. The graffito has been painted over the traces of the fight that took place here. It smells of blood and heavy fuel oil. This was Cindy the Skull. Ah. Looks like Cindy the Skull finally found the words for a masterpiece. The lieutenant crouches, touching the fuel oil with his finger. Looks like it. Yes. This is still fresh. It wasn't here yesterday. I smell heavy fuel oil. And blood. Some of it is even yours. Really? I don't think I had that much blood spilled. Heavy fuel oil. Isn't that flammable? What are you trying to imply, Fingers? You could buy some smokes, light up a ciggy and throw it in there. <laughs> you know, just to see what happens. See if it's flammable. It's better that way. Safer. Okay, well, we're not going to. Uh... Oh, hey! Old man, what's going on? Why are you over here in this bench? Weren't you over there? Officer. Care to play your game with the lonely old man? The jolliness is gone from Gaston's face. What happened, dude? Actually, never mind. Wouldn't be the same. Wait, wait, wait. What's that? Where's Renee? The prick is gone. What? I, I can barely believe it, but he's really gone. Gone where? Hell, most likely. Okay. He was. An absolute can't. Gaston sighs and mumbles, more to himself than you. What, was he killed during the mercenary tribunal? Oh, he would have liked that. Violent lives ending violently. That's how he wanted to go. Sadly, it was not the case. The old man slowly shakes his head. Uh, how did he die exactly? His hungry little heart finally gave out. I see. The dock workers found him in the guard booth this morning. Wasn't even supposed to be working for another week, but he just had to prove how tough he is. I see. Did he feel like he has to prove he can still pull his weight? Doesn't need handouts. Guess he was about to head home, cause when the dock workers found him, he was wearing civilian clothes and not the Kuketu uniform I saw him in all the time. Sometimes I thought he was wearing it just to piss me off. Now the joke's on him, cause he's gonna be buried without it. Wait, <laughs> what? Uh, wearing civilian clothes now? Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. I, I got lost there a second. Do you think your conversation about his job pushed him to go out there? No. Rene was the most stubborn man in Revachol. Nothing you or I could say would ever push him to do anything. The man was completely immovable. Was he really that bad? I offer my sincere condolences. Was he really that bad? I repeat, an absolute cunt. Even his old army buddies didn't want him <laughs> around. He was like an old viper. I see. The only people who could stand to be around him were Jenny and me. She saw something in him when we were just kids and... Okay. Uh, and she never lost sight of it. And I thought if the most beautiful being in the world can love him, then there must be something worth holding on to. 
Let's see. A sec. I need to fix something here. So. All right. Did you love him? We've hated each other <laughs> our entire lives. So much, in fact, that... He falls silent and looks at you, eyes filling up with tears. Yes, I... I loved that angry prick. He didn't deserve it, but I did. You know what his last words to me were? He wipes his eyes with a sleeve. Something mean, that he's sorry. Some right-wing royalist slogan? Something forgettable like, see you tomorrow, probably? Tell me. Just tell me. In Guillaume's time, you'd have been shot without trial. <laughs> That's what he said to me. He lived a cunt, and he died a cunt. Let's leave it at that. The old man gathers himself and wipes his tears again. Here, something to remember your friend by. Give him the photograph of Renee and the girl. Let me see. This was 60 years ago. We all went to that parade. Young René looks so happy. And Jenny... Eyes blurry with tears, he has to stop. I'm sorry, officer. I just... Thank you. Thank you for this little memorabilia. It really means the world to me. That was nice. A small thing for us, but invaluable to him. He probably didn't even know René had the photo. Okay. I offer my sincere condolences. Old people die. You better get ready too. <laughs> I don't think I should tell him that. I offer my sincere condolences. Yes. We are both very sorry for your loss. It is what it is. Part of life, really. But to know someone for 79 years, then one day they're just gone. I feel you on that one, Gaston. Even if you only know them for like a day or a week, five years, ten years even, and then suddenly they're gone the next day. It's, uh, it's painful. It's painful. I just don't know anymore about anything really. But you, you must need something. Uh, let's see, to bet Renee's gone, I was hoping to ask him about Maybell's. I want to go over a few more things about Rene, is that okay? Tell me, what do you know about the dead man? Nope. Uh, Maybell's. Rene wasn't really what you'd call a botanist officer. And believe me, he didn't like Insulindian lilies. Wait, Insulindian lilies? Mm -hmm. That's their old name, dating back to the time of kings and crests, and all that other stuff he loved so much. Why didn't he like them? There were many reasons, but mostly it was the communals. I see. They called them the Bells of Revolution. A sad smile passed his face. I guess in the end, the Insulindian lilies were just another piece of the old insulin. The royalists had to surrender to the Mazovian insurgents. It doesn't really matter anymore. All right. I guess, um... That's it for now. Goodbye, thank you. Well, that was informative. Okay. I guess we'll go ahead and get to the boat. Hey, Si Lang, you're here. What were you up to? Wow! Wow what? A cop limping down the street, bleeding from the shoulder, face bruised, looking like hell? You know what that is? Let me guess. Totally cool? Cool! That's cool! I knew it. Okay, well, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, ceiling. I don't I, I do not need your things at the moment. Uh, I'm running. Not really seeing the limp, but I'm running. In any case. I already checked this, didn't I? You've checked all the traps now. There's nothing else to do with them. The cryptozoologists await your report. He... I don't really have his number, do I? Um, okay. I guess we'll talk to... Lily and... 
See if we can buy the boat. Why is it so slow? No, nope. this way. Officer, what happened? You're limping. Why are you limping? You look terrible. <laughs> About that. I got shot in the foot. It was pretty badass. You would have liked it. Uh, some people heard me. I wanted to talk to you about something else, your boat. Uh, some people heard me. Is this from the shooting in town? We heard gunshots. Not that we don't hear gunshots all the time, but they were closer than usual. Yeah, okay, so she's not, she's not letting it go that easily. There was an exchange of fire on the Rue de saint guilaine It's nothing to be worried about, madame. You should see the other guys. Two dead, one in the hospital. So you're a killer? That's good, I guess. I guess. Better than being dead. Most cops are killers. I was a killer long before this happened. I'm not a killer, mom. Uh, uh mom. <laughs> what did I say, mom? Uh, I'm not a killer, ma'am. I'm a cop. Hi. I guess you are. I understand that's how it goes. I have a question for you. Of course. Can I help you with something? Um... We need to get to that island. That won't be a problem. It's wind still and the tar just dried. We've got two days of relative sunshine ahead. Can we borrow your boat? If you promise to bring it back. And no scraping the hull. I just got it nice and yellow. And no drinking on the boat. And no joyriding either. Okay. Of course, ma'am. It's only for a day or two. Official police business. Aye. Uh, what if I want to rock? Not along. Just, uh, just not along. Uh, I don't know. What if I want to rock? See, that makes me not want to lend you my skiff. <sighs> On a boat, rocking leads to capsizing. That there is an absolutely 100% rock-free skiff. You got that? Okay, okay, I got it, got it. Uh, two days of sunshine. I just got a bacterial infection. I'm sad to hear that. Take care of that with Ether, will you? Don't get too many RCM men round here. We sad to lose the first one. That's cool. You boasting your bacterial infection like that. Okay, that's not what I meant, but what's on the island? Nothing, just ruins. Used to be some kind of fortification there before the war. For the communards. An anti-aircraft gun, I think? Bombed to bits in the landing. I haven't been there myself. Always steered clear of it. Why is this not voiced? And now I have to try to imitate her accent. Hasn't been there herself. Who has then? Uh, you said you haven't been there yourself. Who has then, if not you? My husband used to drink there. Him and his drinking buddies. Always seemed like a bad place to drink to me. People died there during the landing, you know. My mother told me. Okay. This must be one of the many fortifications that was used in the dying days of the revolution against coalition forces before they took this city. The kids sometimes go there too. I know they do, on rafts. I tell them not to, but they bring back old bullet casings and such. Which kids? The twins. God forbid they bring the girl along on some rickety barge. Okay, I guess we're talking to the kids again. Uh, she points to the two kids playing on the concrete yard. Can we maybe ask your twins about that place before we go? Would that be alright? Be my guest. They have a strange way of talking. See if you can get anything useful out of them. I seldom do. Uh, is there anything else I should know about getting there? Well, most of it's sunken. Underwater. That means concrete underwater. Cut your boat if you're not careful. Be sure to enter from the south side. Water's deep there. Okay. Aye, aye, Captain. Thank you. We'll use your skiff to get there. Please be conservative with the fuel, will you? Just filled her up, but it's a small tank. Gotcha. I think we have some gas, but I'm not exactly sure. Alright. Let's talk to the kids really quick. With a crowbar and a bag of plastic bags. <laughs> hey, kids, what's good? The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. Okay, kids, you've been to that island, right? On that island? 
The one who's busy kicking his stone points to the bay. Yes, that one. I need to know what's there. No, some other island. Of course, that one. Uh, yeah, that one. That, um, nothing? Nothing? It's just a sea fort and some plants. You can dig a raft there. It's great. The boy pauses to think with his finger in his mouth. And, and, we make a fire. We make a, we make a fire. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gather the sticks for the fire and bullets. Or oh, not real bullets, empty bullets. Empty bullets are real bullets. Bullet shells. There are a lot of them left over from the war, but this could be important. Wait, uh... Wait, you mean shells? I don't know what they are. What then? They're alive. The fire guy comes and asks us to put the fire out. Fire guy? They must mean a human being on that island, but it's cut off. Uh, someone lives on the island? No. No? Shaking his head vehemently. Yes. Yes, his brother looks at him then at you. Let's go with yes. Why is he the fire guy? Because, because, because he asks. To put the fire out. Okay, that makes sense. Why does he ask you to put the fire out? Um, I don't know. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like people to be there. You shouldn't go. I'm going anyway, because I have to. Yes. Uh, the other one lads laconically, standing with his hands glued to his sides like a little tin soldier. He mentioned something about lights. Uh, yeah, lights. I don't know. Starts one of them. It's hard to tell which one now. <laughs> Did you mean there are electrical lights? Street lights. Um, yes. Okay. So there's electricity. Is there anything else you can tell me about this guy, Age? Does he live there? No, he doesn't live there. I don't think. Okay, anything else? No, he lives there. Been there twice, two times. Uh, he doesn't live there. He isn't there sometimes. Well, you're not always at your house. That doesn't mean you don't live there, right? Anything else? What does this guy look like? I don't know. Well, how come? You've seen him, right? We, we ran. He just yelled, we shouldn't be there. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, let's see, is that all you know? Is there anything more you can tell me about the island? There's a... Uh... uh, the boy says rubbing his eyes. It's clear that he has no intention of finishing the sentence. Lights, fire guy. We should check up on that island. Okay, well, we're gonna take... We're gonna... We'll take that and go then. Thank you, kids. It's something to go on. Uh, we have something to watch out for now. Wait, where's the boat? If it's not if it's not this one, where is it? I'm guessing it's up there. Let's see. Ah, it's here. A skiff with a small steering engine in the back floats on the calm mirror of the sea. Its two seats are empty. Once you get in, that's it. One pull of the starter handle, and you're off into the bay. A strange trepidation comes over you. Are you sure you want to go now? It's kind of like we're going to the final dungeon of the game, but I guess we kind of have to, so... Uh, let's go now. Let's go. This will be the last place we go to. Everything will end here. Have you made all the necessary preparations? Closed all your accounts. What else am I supposed to do? There's no one else in town. Remember what the net picker said. It's a small tank. You won't be going back and forth on this. You take the engine, Kim. I'll hold the boombox. <laughs> what? S say what what? How else do we blast sad FM on our way to the island? You heard me. Don't, be re don't make me repeat myself. Yeah, how else do we... Blast Sad FM on the way to the island. Fine. Let's blast Sad FM then. Okay, let's go. Sad FM is a radio station specializing <laughs> in sad, slow rock songs. 
You seem to know its frequency by heart. Well, we did sing that song, so it makes sense, right? Let's get in. Oh my gosh, I actually took out the boom box. <laughs> I thought he was joking. to a slow stop. The lieutenant turns the engine off. Then, there's silence. That was Sad FM. Radio 101.5 where we play sad musics all day, every day, all day long. In the silence, a sputter of wings. A flock of quails takes off in the distance. Let's go. Let's go. Mm -hmm. 